My father said they just gave her a nickname until they could find out anything. What would that be? It's a night nurse. What? <laughs> Adventures, Finn here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Nightmares. And last time, MC got sick because of that soup Sayori made. And again, I had no idea what was in it, but uh, let's not talk about that one. And also, um, my college, my online college has started, and who cares about that? You guys are here for the mod, aren't you? So, you guys know the drill. And what time is it? It's Doki Doki time. In any case, she probably won't like seeing me out of bed, so maybe I should take the stealthy approach. As I get out of bed, I look at my phone again. It's a little 3 o'clock now and there's still no word from anyone. Club time should be starting in less an than an hour. I guess I won't worry about it for now. Who knows, maybe I'm just being overly paranoid over everything. I tread carefully downstairs, each step creaking softly. Sayori has excellent hearing, so I can only wonder if she'll spot me. I look over to the kitchen and sure enough, there she is by the stove. She seems blissfully unaware that I'm down here as she is humming softly to herself. At a glance, it seems like she's completely fine with this. In a way, she's she seems almost motherly. She's too good to me. Even if she did accept my feelings for her, I'm afraid that I'd only drag her down. Oh! Well, that's neat. A little uh, animation of sneaking up onto Sayori in the kitchen, okay. As I move in closer, it seems Sayori has switched from humming to softly singing to herself. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you've got till it's gone? A pink paradise put up a freaking lot. Monica would have, have a field day taking that song apart for all those grammar errors. Yeah, definitely, and plus I don't know what kind of song is that. Uh, let me know in the comments down below because I, I never heard that song before or if it's just made up. Again, I don't know. Ignoring that, Sayori seems very happy. She's singing the same misheard lyrics from that song and everything. She's acting like the same Sayori I know and secretly love, and yet I can't shake this bad feeling I have. I can't explain it, but I feel like she's giving off a rather concerning aura. Finn? Yeah? I, th I thought he told you to stay in bed. Uh, how did you expect to get better if you don't rest properly? Uh oh, uh, s sorry. I was just, um... Getting a glass of water. Oh, I'm sorry, Finn. I didn't realize you needed more water. No, no. It's fine. Really. I don't mind getting it myself. Well, I do. I'm not a very good nurse if I ignore you like that. Before I can say anything, she grabs a glass of she grabs a glass and pours some fresh water for me. Aw, that's cute. There you go. Great. I can take it from here. No, uh uh Finn. He needs to get back into bed as soon as possible. Sayori, you're acting as I've never carried a glass of water before. But you've never done it while being sick before. Seriously, I think you're worrying too much. I didn't see how dizzy you were, Finn. I was actually kind of scared you might fall and get hurt. Oh, I... I didn't realize. I'm only protecting you for your own good. You're my best friend and my beloved. I'm unable to get another word as <laughs> another word in as she ushers me over to the stairs. Now, come on, let's get you back to bed. You don't have to go through this, Sayori. It's no trouble at all, Finn. I wouldn't be a good nurse if you got hurt on my watch, you know? You're taking this nurse thing seriously. Of course I am. I love and care about you, silly. Oh yeah, that. 
as she leads me back upstairs, I'm reminded again that Sayori confessed to me. That confession is what got me so rattled in the first place. This whole thing still baffles me. She's never shown any interest in me before. At least, I don't think so. Even then, I imagine once we're out of high school, she'll find much someone better than me. Someone who deserves her. Sayori's kindness is wasted on me. Sayori, you shouldn't be wasting your time on me. I mean, you missed the whole day of school because of me. You should be doing other things right about now. I would never leave you like this, Finn. Not when I know I can help. I wouldn't forgive myself if I didn't at least try. You're too good to me, Sayori. I honestly don't deserve you. Did you say something? N nothing. I'm probably just getting delirious again. All the more reason to go back to bed, mister. Fine. You win, Sayori. Of course. I'm your nurse, after all. Y you know you could get arrested for impersonating a nurse, right? Oh yeah, there's that, because if you're impersonating a professional and such, you'll definitely get arrested, but... Still, um, since she's our, well, our, our personal healthcare companion, I guess that kind of counts, I guess, but... No, I mean, she's a childhood friend or now girlfriend since she's taking care of me and all, so... Of course someone out there has to have to take good care of you, you know? I'm not impersonating a nurse, I'm just pretending to be one until you're all better. Th that's the same thing, Sayori. I'm not, I'm not, it's not like I'm doing anything bad to you, Finn. I love you, silly. I wish you'd stop saying that. Don't. <laughs> Don't. The both of us are quiet the rest of the way back to my room. Every single time she says she loves me, I feel this awful pang of guilt. I mean, to have Sayori say she loves me, it just feels too good to be true. She could do, she could do so much better than me. I'm just a school outcast that most people either avoid or ignore. Meanwhile, she's usually very bright and cheerful when her depression doesn't have a hold on her. Now, don't be walking around the house too much, okay? If you need me, you can always just shout for me. Oh, and there's my phone too. Alright, Sayori. By the way, what about the food you were making? Sayori stares at me blankly before a look of panic spreads across her face. Shoot, I forgot. Sorry, Finn. Don't burn the house down. Got it. She dashes out of the room, her footsteps thumping against the stairs. I take out my phone and I look at the time again. It's 3.45. The school day has just ended. Still no word from, from the other Lurch Club members. Okay, I can't ignore this any longer. If I can't get a hold of the rest of the club, then I'll just have to get in touch with someone else at school. And I think I know just who to call. I scroll through my contacts and tap the speed dial. Come on, please pick up. Oh! Oh, who this? Oh, oh her name is Kotono. Kotonoha? Kotonoha-chan? Okay. Hello? Koto. It's me. Finn? What's going on? Why are you calling me? You do realize school barely ended, right? I barely stepped out of my classroom. I'm sorry, Kato. I am, but I have the feeling there's something wrong with the girls in the larger club. Uh oh? What's wrong? Tell me. For one thing, I haven't been able to get a hold of Monica, Yuri, or Natsuki at all today. I didn't see them yesterday for club time. Did you, any, did you see any of them at all? I haven't. It's so strange. Monica never misses classes. Cousin Yuri isn't a slacker either. Oh! She? Uh, oh, so... This girl is, uh, is Yuri's cousin? Okay. I'm not so sure about Natsuki. I'll check around. What about Sayori? 
that's the next thing I was going to say. Also, in case if anyone's curious why my voice is doing like this, I'm not sick, I'm just voice acting to pretend that MC or, well, me, that I'm sick in this mod, if you remember the last episode, just to, you know, give it a little, a little oomph to the thing, you know? I just, I just really want, wanted to, uh, to voice, <laughs> well, I just wanted to, uh, to practice voice acting for, for funsies and all, so uh, I, I was thinking of that one when, when doing this, or before doing this. Sayori is here taking care of me while I'm sick. Oh, I wasn't going to say anything, but you do sound under the weather. Yeah, I don't know how I got sick yesterday, but it just happened. So Sayori has me here, saying she wants to take care of me and help me get better. Well, that's nice of her. She is a sweetheart. I feel like something wrong. something is wrong with her though. This whole time, she's been saying that she loves me. She called me things like her beloved and I almost feel like she's got me under house arrest. I might be a little paranoid, but I can't shake this feeling something is very wrong. Like what, Sayori is a saucy baka? I don't know. <sighs> yes, I, uh, I, I, I thought of saying that, but <laughs> whatever. Sayori has never given off this dangerous vibe around me before. Kotonoha is silent. She's the president of the music club and one of Monica's friends and as well as Yuri's cousin. As such, there have been times where we've met each other very so often. Her vice president, Mio, actually shares the same club room as me. Koto is very mature and level-headed. At the very least, she listened to me speak. I'm almost afraid she's go just going to hang up on me, but she doesn't. Alright, Finn. I'm going to see what I can do. I can tell you're very shaken up about this whole thing and you're not someone to lie about something as curious as missing people. Uh, thank you, Koto. I'm sorry to spring this on you, but I didn't know who else to turn to. You have no reason to worry. After all, my sleuthing skills are as are almost as good as my father's, so I'm sure I'll find something out. For now, all I can say is try to play along with Sayori. Let's hope she hasn't gone completely off the edge or anything. Yeah, she's still being her, her usual sweet self, but then I feel like there's something else to it. Almost like she have, might have gone a little bit psycho. Alright. Just try to go along with whatever she wants. After all, it doesn't sound like she means you any harm. Although I will admit, this does remind me of a crime drama I saw once. I'll talk to Mia and we'll talk. We'll figure something else. Text me if you, text me if you can. Should anything else come up, in case she hears us, I don't want. I wouldn't want to risk tipping her off. Take care, Finn. With that, she hangs up the phone. I had my phone again under the covers. There isn't else there is, there isn't much else I can do and I do still feel rather sleepy. Maybe I should rest just for a bit. Yeah, just come down for a bit and uh hope things for the better. Oh, oh now we're in uh Kotonoha's uh POV here. Okay. For sake, Finn, let's hope we're both wrong here. After ending the call, I immediately rushed to the club room. Given the serious matter at hand, I think it would be best to call off the, cl the meeting for today. Setsuna already texted me that she didn't come to school today, so that only leaves Mio, Kiri, Kiriya, and Shisaki. I look over and find Mio sitting at the desk. Oh! Oh, there you are, Koto! Sorry, Mio, but I need your help with something. What's wrong? I'll explain in a while. For now, I need you to get a hold of Chisaki and tell her the club meeting has been called off today. Also, ask her if she's seen Natsuki at all today. I'll call Kiriya myself and tell her, her that myself. I think Finn might be in a patch of trouble. Goodness. Alright, I'll get on it. I'm also going to pick up the homework for him, so it might be a good excuse for at least going to his house. Good thinking. Alright, let me know what you find out. 
Okay, things are getting a little interesting here. After speaking with Kiria, Kiria, it seems as though she hasn't seen Monica or Yuri at all today. Although I saw them both briefly yesterday, they seem in a good health. I'm drawn out of my thoughts when Mio comes in with a folder in her hand. Did you find out anything? I told Chisaki the meeting was called off, as she said. I asked her about Natsuki and she didn't. She said she didn't see her at all today. She did mention that the last time she saw her was yesterday when she was talking to Sayori, who looked a bit off. That's more or less what Finn was getting at. Did you please tell me what's going on, Kota? You're kind of scaring me. I do my best to summarize everything Finn conveyed to me about how he mysteriously, mysteriously got sick, about how Sayori was taking care of him at home, about how she was acting very strange around him, almost amorous. So she's being sweet but psycho? That's a dangerous combination. She's, he sounded very concerned on the phone, and we both know he isn't the type to pull instant pranks, especially about serious matters like missing people. I got to, I have to admit, Sayori was acting kind of strange yesterday. Strange? How? Aside from wearing a different bow than normal, she was acting kind of... suspicious. What? What? So, is she, she so, was... The Sayori I'm meeting right now, or well, Sayori in this mod a little sus or something, or suspicious rather. <laughs> um, cannot wait to get, uh, to get the bottom. Get <laughs> I don't know how to English. Sorry, cannot wait to get to the bottom of this. She wasn't. She wasn't her usual chatty self, and she seemed to be distracted by something. I think at some point in math yesterday, she. Well, she left to go to the bathroom, but she never came back. Oh dear. Okay, so what now? For now, go home and change into something comfortable. Meet me at my house afterward. We're going to have. We're going to do some investigating. Shouldn't we tell the police? Perhaps, but we. Uh, perhaps, but we have little to no evidence to go off other than the testimony Finn gave us. That doesn't. That isn't very sound evidence. All right. In that case, I'll get going. See you later, Kota. Right. See you later. Mia rushes out of the room, folder still in hand. I pray that I'm in. I'm wrong in making these assumptions, and yet I can't shake off this awful feeling I have deep down. His words sent a chill down my spine. Don't worry, Finn. I know we're all that. I know we're we aren't all that acquainted, but you are still a valuable friend nonetheless. Okay. Um, I hated having to drag Kotonoha into this, but I don't have anyone else I can turn into, or turn to. Calling the police is out of the question for various reasons, especially since Sayori hasn't done anything wrong technically. I am brought out of my thoughts when Sayori announces her presence. Dum da da da! Oh! Um, some soup, and I'm pretty sure uh, that might be some stew or something, I don't know. And some steak. <laughs> well, uh, a lot more better than the, uh, than the hospital foods I've eaten, but uh, this is, this is way better than those. <laughs> Are you going to do that every time you enter my room? Oh, don't be such a grumpy Gus. Anyway, I brought you your food. I hope you like it. I made sure to put extra tender love and care into it. She places a tray on my bed. The meal she cooked is com comprised of some cooked salmon, chicken soup mixed with various vegetables, and what seems to be a cup of hot tea. Oh, I thought that was like soup. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that's just, that's just what it looks like to me. I even added some honey to your tea to make sure it was extra nice and sweet. Wow, you went all out on this, didn't you? Of course, Finn. I wouldn't do anything less for you, my darling. There she goes again. 
<laughs> Look, Sayori, I understand that you're in love with me, but come on, cut it out with those uh, with those cute nicknames. <laughs> oh, and actually, in other words, please do. <laughs> I don't really mind, because of course, I freaking love you. The more she says she loves me, the more I feel like this is just just some cruel dream. A cruel dream I'd rather wake up from than to have continuously endure. It's almost torture at this point. I'll be downstairs eating my meal, okay? Remember, don't go walking around the house too much. You need to stay in bed or else you won't get better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I got it. I told you I was sorry. Alright. So, lo so long as we understand each other. As she walks... As she starts to walk out of the room, she suddenly stops. Uh, I hope you're not too upset for me for being so bossy. It's just, I don't want to see you get hurt. I couldn't forgive myself if you were hurt and I could, and I didn't do anything to help you. It's alright, Sayori. I understand. I'm not, upset, I'm not upset with you at all. Thank you, Finn. Sayori strides over to my bed again and surprises me with a kiss on my forehead. Aww! She gives me a smile before walking out. I could never be mad at you, Sayori. As I mindlessly eat my food, these negative thoughts swirl around my, in my head, reminding me how I don't deserve someone like her. Nearly everyone loves being around Sayori. Me, on the other hand, I'm just your average residential school nobody. I don't have any special talent that sets me apart from everyone else. I'm not a sports superstar or a star student like Monica. Despite this, I still imagine what it would be like if Sayori were to re ever return my feelings. The kind of life we might have. This, this just feels like one of my dreams brought to life. Can't be real. Just can't be. I'm no one special. If anything, I'd only be a dead weight dragging her down. Hmm. After finishing my food, I set the tray down on the floor and decide to watch some TV to just to keep myself occupied. Oh! Also, oh, it's, um, let me guess. Um, MP10, Masterpiece 2.0, Optimus Prime, and, uh, I think that's Netflix Bumblebee kind of looks like it, but uh, I can't tell if that's Masterpiece or uh, War for Cybertron Trilogy Netflix B, but uh, again, my my nerd in instincts had to uh, had to come in because <laughs> what can I say? I just like the, um, you know, analyzing visuals and well, especially when it's action figures and all that stuff or reference. I just had to. Sayori hasn't been here to check up on me. Maybe she's busy doing nurse things? It's not like I need her right now or anything, but still, I can't help but wonder what has gotten into her. I still can't shake this uncomfortable feeling. A part of me wants to get out of here, sensing some immediate danger hanging over me, and yet a part of me doesn't. As though my heart and mind aren't seeing eye to eye at the moment, so and so far my heart is winning. I turn my attention back to the TV to calm my mind. There he is, my little guy. There he is, my little guy. Isn't he cute? Uh, that's not what I wanted to hear. Yeah, maybe some mind-numbing television will help take my mind off this beautiful nightmare I find myself in. It isn't long before I ended up falling asleep with the TV on. Perhaps it worked a little too well. <laughs> what do you think of my Optimus Prime voice? Kind of good or bad? I don't know, but I'm just trying. After talking things over at my house, Mio and I set set off to see Finn, or at the very least, see, try to see what's going on with him. I have to admit, this has me very, very nervous. My father has praised my obs observation skills and has said I had the potential to be a good detective. Even so, i never actually done any real detective work before. I just can't leave Finn like this, though. So, uh... Oh, 
So, you know what we're going to do, right? Yes. We're just going to drop off the homework for Finn. I'll do my best to distract Sayori should she answer the door. Meanwhile, if possible, I'll see if I can do some minor investiga investigating while she's distracted. Are you sure this will work? Well, not exactly. I saw something like this in a movie where a movie once where a woman tried to break into a kidnapper's house to save her love interest. And what happened? Uh, she ended up getting captured as she tried to get him out of the best basement. Okay, maybe we should be both both be present and see what we can learn for ourselves. Yes, I think that should be safer. Also, is it just me or are my eyes deceiving me that that um, Mio's clothes look low res? Like, gosh dang, look at them pixels. <laughs> I'm just saying because again, as much as I like, you know, analyzing the um, the visuals and references and such, eh, this kind of bugs me a little bit because look at that. Look at oh my god. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't talk about that. Let's uh, let's move on. You know, you should lay off watching so many mystery and crime dramas, Kota. Perhaps, but I can't help it. It also doesn't help when my father comes home with all these fascinating stories. Oh, right. He's the chief of police. There's one case in particular running through my mind right now after hearing Finn talk. You know this isn't anything like those cases your father handles, right? Of course I do. Still though, he, the tone of his voice and the description gave, he gave of Sayori, I can't help but see the similar, similarities. You see, back when I was a little girl, my father told me about this nurse who was suspected of doing away with her patients. Sayori would never wouldn't do that. Oh, okay. I uh, okay. I, I I guess her uh, her clothes are fully rendered now. I'm not entirely sure if it, if that's just me or the game or the visuals. I don't know. I'm not saying she would. Still though, it said it was to, said this nurse would target specific patients, men. She would often seduce them to lure them into a false sense of security all need to mercil mercilessly do away with them. Few people caught glimpses of her that gave what information they could, but... But... As far as anyone knows, she was never caught. Mio's eyes widen at this revelation. It's been a few years and the murders have seemingly stopped, but the mystery remains. Aside from the description of her having blonde hair and brown eyes, there isn't much else to work with. Not even a name. It's believed that she wasn't a real nurse, only impersonating one to get close to her victims. My father said they just gave her a nickname until they could find out anything. What would that be? The night nurse. What? Obviously, Sayori isn't the night nurse, but I can't um, help deny seeing some parallels between what she's doing and what this nurse did. For our sake, let's hope it's just an odd coincidence and nothing more. Trust me, I feel the same way. As we approach the address, I catch a glimpse of Sayori carrying a bag out of her house, taking over where Finn presumably lives. Mio and I exchange glances before we make our way to her. Hello, Sayori. Oh, oh, she's carrying a um, she's carrying a garbage bag. All right. Surprised, Sayori drops the bag into a nearby bush. A pair of thick work gloves fall out of the bag upon impact. Uh, oh, uh, hi, you guys. What brings you over to this neck of the woods? Oh. Well, we heard Finn wasn't feeling well. I couldn't help but be concerned, so I volunteered to bring his homework for the day to him. Meanwhile, I only tagged along just to keep her company and make sure she doesn't get lost. Say Sayori eyes us, looking us from head to toe. She then notices the folder in Mia's arms, probably snatching it from her. Okay, great. I guess you can go ahead and leave now. Wait just a minute, Sayori. What's going on with you? 
Are you feeling okay? Huh? What are you talking about? We noticed you were acting a bit off yesterday, so we were wondering if you were feeling fine. Of course I'm fine. Why wouldn't I be? Then why weren't you in school today? That's because I'm staying here to make sure Finn is taken care and recovers safely. It wouldn't feel- Wait, what? It wouldn't feel right leaving by himself when he needs me. Oh, okay. Um, well, I do need her, but uh, something tells me there's definitely wrong with, with her right now, but I cannot shake the feeling or identify it. I don't know. I mean, some help. You can be honest with us, Yuri. We're all friends here. I can't help but something about you is f different. Like what? Your bow, for one thing. I mean, obviously the blue bow gave it away, but um, fortunately I'm not wearing blue right now, so... Oh well. What are you talking about? I always wear this bow. We look- we both look at each other with confused looks before looking back at Sayori. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll- I have my nurse duties to attend to. If you don't have anything else for me, I'll be going back to check on Finn. Sayori wastes no time grabbing the bag and the gloves she dropped before rushing back over to where Finn lives. She promptly opens and slams the door shut. Hmm... That went well. Finn is right. There is something up with Sayori. She was rather dismissive of us, don't you think? Well, I have to admit you might be onto something. I'm confused over what she just said about her bow. That did strike me as odd. What caught my interest was what she was carrying in that bag. I noticed it too. What would a nurse need with heavy duty working gloves? I'm not sure. Well, unless if she's bringing in more uh, medical equipment or, well, medicine for that matter, it's uh, no problem. I never heard any. Uh, I never heard of any nurses using those kinds of gloves for anything. Exactly. As much as I didn't like the idea of it, perhaps we might find some answers in Sayori's house. Are you seriously suggesting we break into someone's home? Under normal circumstances, I would be highly against it, but these aren't normal circumstances. Alright, I still don't agree with this, Koto. I'll take the blame for everything, Mio. I won't let you get in trouble. Then that's not what I'm worried about, Koto. I don't want anything to happen to you either. It'll be fine. After all, I'm perfectly capable of defending myself. Mio reluctantly follows me to Sayori's front door. I glance over to my shoulder. There's no sign of Sayori. I take a hairpin from my braid and begin working on the lock. Unfortunately, picking a lock seems to be much harder than it looks. As I continue the struggle, Mio approaches the door and turns the doorknob, opening the door. Huh? Sometimes the simplest solutions are the best answer. Alright. And not only that, because, well, since MC and Sayori live right next to each other, I think, or since they're childhood friends and all, well, she leaves the door unlocked for her to, uh, to let him in and stuff, so, uh, yeah. Let's move. Right behind you. Koto and Mio doing some investigation work on finding some answers in Sayori's house. I mean, true though, because, well, as much as I love Sayori and all, I can't help but uh, feel a little uncomfortable after what she did and, well, from the last episode and right now. Yeah, I'm definitely um, suspecting her in this mod, but eh, we'll play along and see how this goes. But I'm sorry, I'm going to end this episode right here, fellow knights, but don't you guys worry, there will always be another episode. So if you enjoy what you're watching and like what you're seeing, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe if you haven't already, it'll help me a huge bunch in making more content like this, and click on the bell notification to be notified. And if you want to play this mod for yourself, as always, link in the description below. And with that being said, thank you guys all so much for watching. Finn the Dark Knight signing off, and I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay awesome and have fun, fellow knights and adventurers.